Hey, deserving listeners, it's time to continue our journey with Colt and Larissa or Larissa on 90 Day Fiance. Let's get to the show. Stephen and Olga, I know the waiting period can be very <laughs> stressful when you're waiting to be together. I hope you can get some good news very soon. I hope so too. Awesome. Okay, everybody, um, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, okay. If I hold on, hold on. A second. Go ahead, Stephanie. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that'll be a five minute break, guys. So I don't know if you caught that, but this is the tell off and Colt and Larissa weren't supposed to be there. And then halfway through the episode, suddenly they're there. <laughs> and now the other couples are hearing the news that Colton and Larissa are, are arriving on set. I didn't want to see her. Made me cringe. Look at it, it makes me sick. I swear to God. Like I look at both of them and I'm like, sick to my stomach. <laughs> Interesting, I didn't know that. Is, that. is that what a lot of people think about them? Maybe that's why you asked me to react to this couple. You thought I might get sick to my stomach like that guy. I don't know. Ay, ay, ay. Cole and Marissa, see they love attention, and this is gaining them a lot by like, surprise, I'm here. I think they took advantage of us. Yeah. All of us make plans. We try to be on time. I think that is not for, for them, everything is an emergency. Call 911 right now because they are not here. <laughs> <laughs> do they, do the other cast members get to see all the show? Is this what happened? Does the tell all happen after the show airs? Cause they seem to know each other and all that kind of thing. Maybe that's how things work. My makeup, my clothes. We weren't sure we want to deal with the drama and the stress of the other couples, but we decided to come. And Larissa, how are you feeling about meeting the other couples? I have enough against the other couples, but if they try to say to me, they will hear back. Jonathan and, and Fernanda, Fernanda yeah. have a beef with Larissa and I. Yeah. We'll make sure to correct that this evening. Interesting. So I guess that is how it goes. They air the show, and as the season is progressing, the cast members are communicating over Instagram or something, and then they record the tell-all. So apparently Colt and Larissa have some kind of beef with some of the other couples. Why would that happen? I'm trying to figure out why would the cast members get in a fight? I mean, they're not even involved in each other's lives. Uh, maybe we'll find out. Uh-huh. You are my prince. <laughs> are you ready to protect me today, tonight? I'm ready. So they're still together. I mean, that's saying something. Welcome back. Colt and Larissa are on their way and should be joining us very soon. John and Fernanda, you guys have had some exchanges with Colt and Larissa on your social media. Fernanda, exactly what was your issue with Larissa on social media? I mean, I haven't an issue. I just made a comment, like my honest opinion. If I post in my social media, help me, call 911, it's something that people who support me in my social media take seriously. Okay, interesting. So for her, she's saying that Lar Larissa or Larissa, as she says, posted to social media, I need help, call 911. Now, I don't, what does that mean? Maybe she was legitimately needing help. It sounds like, this woman is saying that it was a false alarm. Let's watch. And they worry about me. And I was receiving messages of people asking me if I know her, if I know I knew then she was okay. How could she help? And how and I'm like, I don't know. And then she's like, cop car, let me model about it. It's like And joke about it. No, that you don't you don't play with those things. And that was my comment. Okay, so this woman is accusing her of manipulating people to make her watch her on Instagram or Facebook or something. All right. So I don't want to do it anymore. Can you just stop me? Larissa, just put a mic on, please. Can you do that? The crew has gone out to buy Larissa dresses. I really hope they find something that Larissa likes. This is a to go under your eye, yes? I feel devastated because I will look for real fabulous if I have my clothes here. 
Fernanda is jealous of me because she's ugly, I'm beautiful. So I not go out if I don't feel amazed and comfortable. All right, so there's nothing wrong with wanting to put your best foot forward. A lot of people, you know, really are interested in the way they look. I, I'm a YouTuber. I mean, if I'm having a bad hair day, I'm not doing reaction videos. Well, I'm usually having bad hair days. So <laughs> let's just say I'm never having a good hair day. I'm always just having some degree of neutral to bad. So anyway, if I'm having, like, for example, uh, I if I go for a run or something or it's raining outside and, you know, because my hair is, I don't know, it, it does weird stuff. And there's nothing wrong with someone saying, okay, you know what? I, I, I don't look good. I don't look the way I want to. This is going to go out to millions of people. You know, all the other cast members, I'm sure, it, were at least a little bit concerned about the way that they looked. And we put a lot of pressure on women. And I think she actually plans on having her looks be a part of her career. So, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with having that preference. Having said all that, having some flexibility and concern for other people's schedules is, you know, something that you should think about. The other thing that I'll say is that I've had an hypothesis, and it's total speculation, that when she was growing up, her her life was such that she was abandoned or mistreated or something happened to her, some sort of relational traumas when she was young, that led her to develop a solution to that problem by trying to get attention from other people, demanding attention by getting people to look at her or something along those lines. And, and I've treated people like this, and it's a known relational trauma condition that people will have in life. It's well described. It's been described by psychoanalysts going back to the late 1800s, I think, or at least early 1900s. So it's a known human phenomenon, and she might have that. I don't know. I would have to do a full assessment, which usually requires five to 15 sessions with a willing you know, client who you know will tell me about their inner, inner life, but she has some minor red flags of it. So when you have that condition, beca you know, because you're being mistreated, you're being abused or neglected, and you try a bunch of different things, nothing works. But this one thing really works, which is you you get attention, you demand attention, you become very dramatic with the way that you present yourself. You make sure that you're always looking good. You make sure that other people are noticing you. You know, you really kind of poke other people. Hey, pay attention to me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. And when you get a little bit of attention, you get a little bit of love, you get a little bit of security, and you can relax and you feel safe. People with this condition equate quite rationally when they're young with uh, safety with getting attention. To, to feel safe, you must demand and command attention from, from other people because if you don't do that, there's no attachment or maybe there's even abuse or something, something bad is happening. So you can imagine that that would really lock in your behavior in life. In addition to this, you're walking around with a lot of trauma and a lot of assumption that other people aren't going to be there for you, a lot of self-esteem issues in, inside, and a lot of sensitivity to rejection and criticism because you weren't given enough love or attention or security or praise when you were very young. I have no idea if that is the case for her. But I've treated people like this before, and like I said, during this season, she had some of the markers of that. So. Again, there's nothing wrong with wanting to look good on camera and saying, I, I want my makeup right, I want a good dress. Having said that, if her traumas run deep around this issue, she wouldn't just have a normal preference for wanting to look good on camera. To not look good on camera could be equated in her psyche with death or trauma or abandonment or abuse because that's what was happening to her when she was very young. So that would amplify her intensity around making sure that she has the right dress and the right and the right makeup. So let's see how her emotions, do, uh, you know, progress as this stress occurs for her. It's literally pretty much the worst. But they don't have to look like. Look what we have. That looks this nice. is the yellow, mm -hmm. and this is the black. I love you. I can try it alone. Okay. Yeah. Try this one on, baby. Just now do me a favor. I, I look like a old woman. No, you don't. It's baby. not my style. Sorry, Larissa. it's not my style. So we're starting to see her have an emotional reaction, and Colt is trying to help. If I were him, I'd just let her, 
go through this by herself because I can't imagine that he's going to help at all. But let's continue watching. Who is Bruno Aiki? Just try this on. I don't off. have a sex dress. So why do you with those bitch I want to go? All right. Interesting. So she just said, if I don't have a good enough dress to rival with those bees out there, then I'm not going to do it. So this exhibits that fear and that decompensation. I don't know, speculation. And I've speculated about this in the past in terms of her almost determined rivalry with Debbie in that for her, it's possible that when she was young, and I wish we had some idea of what her childhood was like. It would just really would help, I think. Anyway, the possibility is that when she was young, she was not getting enough love and attention. She was being mistreated in some way. And there were other people next to her, maybe a sister, I don't know, maybe even a mother who was actually getting some attention and some safety from the world. And she, when she saw this other person getting love and attention, then it really upset her and it made her target that person with a lot of anger, be, you know, be very convinced that that person is out to get her and to feel frequently in competition with those other people. So I don't know, but it's possible that her th the threat of the competition and looking better th in her mind than the other women equates to safety. You know, for, for all of us, we have our safe emotional places. And when that safety is threatened, we react. It's akin to being thrown into a den full of snakes or something. You're going to freak out if you, unless you love snakes. But if you hate snakes, you're going to freak out and you're, you're going you're gonna to do whatever it takes to get out of that pit of snakes, right? You're not going to be nice about it. You're going to step on snakes if you have to. You, you, will, you will do anything to get to the safety of away from those snakes. Well, when it comes to social situations, interpersonal situations, it's the same intensity that we have. So let's watch her. Guys, ETA and Colton Larissa, we... Try this one on, baby. Oh, a, this is a beautiful dress, trust me. The airline lost Larissa's luggage and production bought her a bunch of outfits, but she doesn't like any of them. She's upset, naturally. So we're gonna try as many as we can until you're happy. What about this one? Will you try this cute one? This is the first time I've seen other people reacting to Colt and Larissa in that the other cast members seem to universally hate Larissa or Letty says I'm saying as she likes to call it. So this reminds me of something that I think I've wanted to talk about but has haven't yet, which is that we all have traumas in our past with various different kinds of people. Often our traumas involve people who were hurtful to us, who didn't care about our feelings, who seem to us to be very self-absorbed. This is why narcissistic toxicity and gaslighting is so popular on the internet because it feels narcissistic. When someone is being hurtful to us, it feels like you don't get me. You don't understand my feelings. You don't care about my feelings. You must be so into your own feelings that you did that to me. You did that to me because you are pathological. You are narcissistic. Anyway, so we have a lot of that in our past. And so when we watch this show, we will transfer or displace those past relationships onto the people on the TV screen, whether it's our parents who hurt us or that pop popular girl at school or the bully in the fifth grade. It, we have those traumas, so many of these traumas and so many unresolved damage that's done to our psyche and our personality. And so when we watch this show, it gives us this opportunity to actually recreate through predictive identification this relationship. And our hopes in our, psychically is that we can heal from what's happening. We can get back at that person, that person who bullied us or made fun of us or made us feel stupid or ugly or fat or whatever. We can finally just really let that person have it, you know, really give it back to them. And as a collective, all of us online, we can really judge that person and put them in, that, in their place. Now, I'm not saying that it isn't justified sometimes, I don't know, but this happens in politics, this happens in other formats, but I'm realizing, because I don't watch a lot of reality TV until you started asking me <laughs> a, a number of months ago when Love is Blind came out, and I'm realizing that I have this reaction. I, I'll, I'll start to notice, and maybe, and some of you will even comment below, you'll just be like, oh, Kirk seems to not like so-and-so. <laughs> And that very well could be because people in my past hurt me and this person reminds me of that. And so I have an elevated reactivity to that person. I seem particularly rigid or activated or triggered by particular sorts of people. And so 
I didn't realize this, but you know, this whole season there's been a number of couples, but for whatever reason, Colt and Larissa are, I guess, the most triggering to people. And why is that? Well, there's something about, I'm guessing at least Larissa, that for us, we have someone in our past who made us feel the way she seems to make other people feel. Someone who seems self-absorbed, someone who takes away the attention from us, someone who seems so in their own world and they're so narcissistic and they just, everything is about them and it's not about us. It's all about them and it's, and it's never about us. And, oh, she reminds me of my older brother or that bully or that popular girl. When I walked into the lunchroom in the fifth grade and that popular girl made fun of me and all the other people, you know, I'm just thinking about mean girls right now or something. But anyway, we have those traumas in our past. And so it just gets really intense. And I think it clouds our ability to see things accurately. Now, maybe reality TV is providing a service psychologically for all of us. Maybe it's therapeutic. I don't know. Actually, comment below. I'm interested in this because... I don't know if it's therapeutic. I, up until this point, I've usually assumed that it's not necessarily therapeutic. We get a little bit of venting, if you will, but we don't get any corrective experience. When you actually enter, if we ha could sit down with the people who are triggering you and actually have some exchange and some repair, particularly with the people who hurt you in the past, as a therapist, I do this all the time, then we see transformation and healing. Just screaming at a television screen, it, I, I'm guessing just perpetuate it, but let me know. So the questions I have for you are, do some of the people that you react the most to, is it an uh, indication of a trauma that you've experienced in the past? The second question is, while watching the show and having an emotional reaction to particular people, do you actually heal from those past traumas. You know, maybe you do. Maybe you get some power of just like you're screaming at the screen, you're watching their lives go down the tube and, and it and it feels good. It's just like, ah, I get some satisfaction from that and I can I can heal from the past. I don't know though. You know, let me let me know in the comments below. All right, well that does it for that episode of Psychology in Seattle in which I react to this TV show. Let me know what you think in the comments and everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really do.